A common form of pet bedding on sale in virtually every pet store across the globe is that of wood shavings. They are natural, cheap, and usually sustainably resourced, and offer excellent thermal and antibacterial properties. However, stories abound in online pet communities of risks to health of these wood shavings. So we're going to dig a little deeper into these claims and identify what is a fact and what is not a fact. So let's take a closer look at whether wood shavings are a silent pet killer. Now this video contains a number of facts and references a number of studies, and as usual, to reduce the spread of speculative information on the internet, we provide a long list of references to each and every one of these facts in the description below. Now, trees contain all sorts of compounds, resins, and oils, which are vital to their function and health. Unfortunately, some of those compounds have been implicated as a health risk. If we look at published scientific studies, there are a couple which are regularly referenced by the online pet communities when talking of the risks involved in wood shaving products. Those studies identify that laboratory rats and mice living on pine and cedar wood shavings induce a higher level of drug-metabolizing liver enzymes than those rats and mice living on other beddings. Now, these studies don't exist for the benefit of pet owners. Rather, they intend to identify whether wood shavings risk interfering with the medical results of other studies. These studies therefore offer no opinion or conclusion on the long-term impacts of these increased liver enzymes on the health of pets. It is important to note, though, that these drug metabolizing enzymes are the body's natural response to toxins in the blood, and it's how the liver extracts them from the bloodstream. The uncertainty, therefore, is not whether they exist, rather it's whether the long and continued exposure to those enzymes can cause some sort of damage to the liver. It's tempting and natural to infer that such ongoing high levels of enzymes in the liver will lead to strain and ultimately to liver disease. Now, no matter how logical this may appear, it is still speculative and it has not been medically proven. Similarly, other studies have shown that the vapors from certain pine compounds are cytotoxic. This means they cause disintegration and rupture of the cells of the airways and the lungs. However, this study is performed in a laboratory setting with concentrated levels of the toxins applied directly to cells within a petri dish. The study itself acknowledged that very little is known about how this plays out in the live body in terms of the extent of the damage and the duration for it. Again, this study was not carried out for the benefit of pet owners. Instead, it was carried out to improve the understanding of the risks to sawmill workers for their continued exposure to wood dust. There are no long-term medical studies which conclusively identify either way whether wood shavings pose a health risk to pets. Although a short-term study was carried out which assessed the effects on laboratory mice of pine and cedar wood shaving beddings, this study looked at general health indicators such as growth, food intake, oxygen consumption, appearance, and behavior. This study lasted four months and in the end concluded no significant difference between mice sleeping on wood shavings and mice sleeping on the control paper bedding. Whilst this study is a useful data point, its weaknesses are the relatively short duration of the test, as well as the lack of any post-mortem to identify whether there is any internal damage which is not yet presenting externally. Due to the lack of definitive studies, speculative and personal opinion is rife on the internet. Pet owners are left forming their own deductions based on general medical assumptions rather than on proven scientific conclusions. These personal deductions are then often proved or disproved by reference to personal or anecdotal pet ownership experiences. People who have formed a view that wood shavings are dangerous will tend to find personal experiences which support their view. This could be entirely correct, or it could have been circumstantial. Similarly, people who are of the view that wood shavings are not dangerous will tend to refer to experience of long-lived pets who sleep on wood shavings. But that does not discount the possibility that those pets had experienced undiagnosed, progressively deteriorating health, resulting ultimately in their death, albeit at an older age. Now, if we err on the side of caution and assume that there are health implications relating to certain compounds within wood shavings, then the next question would be, do these compounds vary over time and can we reduce them? There are a lot of variables at play here, so let's look at them in more detail. There are various substances of interest and they exist in different volumes in different species of trees, but are generally collectively known as volatile organic compounds or VOCs. The volatile part of the phrase simply refers to the ease in which these substances turn into gas. 
Studies so far have identified that the substances within pine and red cedar found to be causing the problem are the resin acids. In pine, it is abetic acid, and in red cedar, it is plicatic acid. Compounds of lesser concern are found in other softwoods, such as spruce or fir, and of lesser concern still in hardwoods, such as beech, birch, and maple. These problem compounds are found within the tree resin and are a colourless solid in their pure form. Whilst in solid form, these substances are considered non-hazardous, and indeed they are even approved by the FDA for human consumption. However, it is the gases which form from those solids which cause the problems. Whilst these resin acids are solids at room temperature and have high melting and boiling points, they do still turn to gas at well below those temperatures. This is because when exposed to air, they can either evaporate directly or oxidize into gas products. It is the inhalation of these gas VOCs that is the concern. So we know that these resin acids convert into gas VOCs at room temperature, so the question now is, does the extent of these VOCs vary over time? One study, for example, showed that when wood pellets were stored in the open air, the level of resin acids reduced by 40% over a four-week period. Another study, which looked at aged timber over decades and centuries, identified that VOC emissions reduced with the age of the product. These studies therefore indicate that with greater age and with greater exposure to air, the lower the concentration of VOC emissions and therefore the safer the product as a bedding. Of course, if VOC emissions do degrade over time, then our next question is, can we speed up the degradation of VOC emissions? The most obvious area to look at in this respect is heat treatment. Some personal websites and internet forums have incorrectly pointed to the high melting and boiling point of abetic acid being a reason why heat treatment, such as kiln drying, does not have an effect on reducing VOC emissions. Abetic acid does have a high boiling point of around 250 degrees centigrade, and this is indeed higher than many typical heat treatments. But this is largely of an irrelevance. Firstly, a substance does not need to hit its boiling point before it turns into gas. Evaporation can occur directly from solid or liquid form, otherwise washing would not dry on the clothesline. And secondly, unlike water, in the natural environment, resin acids do not simply melt and then boil away. At a relatively low temperature, from room temperature to 80 degrees centigrade, the resin acids start to oxidize and bond with the oxygen in the air. This is a chemical reaction and changes those resin acids into a different chemical compound. These compounds then trigger an exothermic reaction, which releases heat and converts them into gas. The heat from this reaction further helps melt the resin acids and speeds up this oxidization process. Therefore, any drying or heat treatments can greatly increase the gas conversion process and hence reduce the remaining VOC contents in the wood shaving products. A study on Scott's pine identified that when comparing air drying pine to heat treated pine at 230 degrees centigrade for 24 hours, the air drying pine emitted eight times more VOCs than the heat treated pine. A similar study heated Douglas fir to 120 degrees for 10 hours, and this was found to reduce the terpene content by 99%. The terpenes are a subclass of VOCs of which resin acids belong. So it is clear that heat treatments can greatly reduce VOC emissions, but not all heat treatment is the same. Temperatures and durations can vary considerably, and therefore the impact on VOC emissions can vary considerably too. Finally, studies identify that resin acid tends to concentrate in the heartwood of a tree, and therefore products which identify as being manufactured from the outer parts or branches of a tree may be an identifier of a lower risk product. So what's the takeaway here? Well, whilst there's much scientific study which points to strong indicators of health implications with certain pine or cedar wood shaving products, there is no ready-made definitive conclusion on the extent of this risk in the real world, nor the time period over which health implications may arise. There is a range of anecdotal evidence available from pet owners, but as you'd expect, this is not something that we can rely on conclusively. Personal experiences are somewhat unreliable due to their inherent bias and lack of objectivity and control environments. As always, in our videos, we don't tell you what you must do, as life is rarely black and white. 
Instead, we aim to give you the informational tools by which you can make your own informed decisions. There will naturally be a mix of people who choose to continue using shavings, those who remove shavings altogether, and those who choose to middle grounds, which may involve some sort of heat-treated products, or one involving spruce or fir or hardwoods. Furthermore, I contacted a large number of wood shaving retailers and manufacturers and asked if there were any processes which they consider might identify or reduce the risk of VOCs, but not a single one of them chose to respond. Read into that what you will. Before we go, I'll leave you with two final facts emanating from studies in this area. Almost all bedding materials were found to have some form of disadvantage or medical implication of some sort. Even the bedding which was considered to be the safest, one made from corn cobs, the laboratory rats and mice suffered poorer quality sleep than they did on wood shavings and therefore suffered the health consequences from poor quality sleep. The final point is, before we get too excited with ridding our houses from evil wood shavings, it's important to note that you cannot escape VOCs. Wood is ubiquitous throughout our homes, from real wood, MDS or plywood, kitchen cabinetry, flooring or furniture, as well as in the very fabric of the building, the stud walls, the joists, the beams, and the roofing. All of these continue to emit VOCs. There's even a name for it, sick building syndrome. Nothing in this world is risk-free. We all just have to ensure that we're sufficiently informed and make our choices. Thanks for watching. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe and try out some of our other videos.